In this video, I break down the numbers of a current refurbishment project that we have just undertaken for one of our investment investors and just finished. So these are really current numbers. It's for a 85K property that I bought in my remote location area, as I said, for an investor with my partner, Matty Brooklyn's Estates. We spent around, these are not exact figures, but spent around 15K on it. This is what I call a keep it simple, stupid kiss refurbishment. This is your bread and butter in the buy to let world. Buy to let definitely still works in these sorts of areas, but you've got to do simple refurb, especially if you're doing a miles away, 250 miles away, under 15K. It forces up the value enough without having to spend too much going into structural work. In the video, we break down all the costs. I even go over cost of the stuff we didn't do, like the roof, the door, the windows. We didn't actually replace them, but I do go through and tell you what that will cost you. So you've got an idea if you're undertaking these refurbishments. A little clue for you is I will try and keep these under 15 to 20K if you can, because that's the sort of sweet spot between 10 to 20K that forces the value up enough without having to take on too much of heavy refurb and very manageable in this sort of price range, in this bracket range. Make sure you hang around to the end because at the end, we're gonna show you the after video walkthrough of what it looks like afterwards. But in the meantime, smash that like button as it really does help this channel. So first thing I'll do when I come to a property is I'll walk across the road and I'll look out the front of it and use your check sheet with this. The check sheet's designed in a way that it goes in logical order. So if you look out, look, I'm looking at the roof, I'm looking along the roof line, I'm looking at the chimney, I'm looking at the point in, which is a cement between the chimney, I'm looking at the point in on the building. So you can see some's been repointed there on there. This is an ex-local authority style building. So these are very different from Victorians. The pointing on these buildings are cement on Victorians, they're lime. They're one of the things you need to look out for on Victorians. On this one, even though it's been repointed, it's over top of existing cement. So I'm looking at the windows, I'm looking at the guttering line, I'm looking just down the building, and I'm looking at the garden, the fence in the front. So this needs a good clear out. What I would be doing with this is I would definitely be taking, so I'll just take out all this front part here and I'll just leave this open. I'll take this wooden part out, this wooden part here out and just leave it open. Not a major cost to clear that garden. You're probably looking at a day or two labor of somebody around 150, 200 pound a day labor. So you'd get that tidied up for a couple of days. When you've got damp problems, there's a myth with rising damp. So it, like you speak to damp specialists, they're gonna tell you straight away to do a damp proof course. Often it's a drainage or some sort of problem. So look around the like parameters of the building for any points where water can collect or pile up. So all good around here. What you wanna look out for on these is these radiator pipes. So the nice thick ones like that, you can tell the radiators are okay. So these radiators will be fine with a paint. So look in, look around in the room. You want to look at all the points of it, the skirting, plugs on skirting. Look at the windows. Again, look, handles here. We see there's a missing handle. Check all the windows and see how they open. These are really common things with tenants when they move in. They really moan about windows not opening properly. You're backwards and forwards. It costs you more time. Always look for them signs of them little thermostats on the wall here because that'd be a backboiler. There's no backboiler in here. It must have been decommissioned a while ago. Sometimes them gas fires in front of there is another the old 1980s looking gas fires is a sign of that. So yeah, with these as well carpets, definitely change this. Even if it's in good condition, like I was on an on-patch day yesterday, and people were saying, what'd you get this cleaned? I would change this because of color. What I do on my ground floors, I go all the way through them with wooden, like, well, laminates, wooden style one. Get it from magnets, really reasonably priced, and it's really nice quality, it's great, looks good, it's long. On properties, I call it for sake of it jobs. So people say for the sake of it, you must put tiles on. For me, it's no, for the sake of it, it's gonna cost you probably three or 400 pound more to do tiles instead of cladding. If it doesn't give you any more rent, if it doesn't give you any more valuation and rent on it any faster, you don't wanna do it. But there is some for sake of it's worth doing. So flooring, it's gonna last 15 to 20 years as opposed to five to six years. So even though it's gonna cost you maybe 400 pound to do at the front end, it's gonna last a hell of a lot longer at the, at the back end. So you, that for sake of it is worth doing for me. So as I'm looking around here, I'm looking at the walls, I'm looking at the condition of the walls. So these wall conditions in pretty good condition, but this sort of stuff I would definitely take off. So that would be hacked off and just made good of. These open plan doors, we've got to look at on these properties, you've got to look at the end value. And then you've got to then work backwards to see how much you can do to this property to still maintain the margin within the property. And for me, I like a minimum 10% uplift on properties, but my general rule is the more work I do, the bigger the uplift I want. So if I'm gonna spend 10K on a refurb, I'm happy to have a 15% uplift. If I'm gonna spend 30K on a refurb, I want more like a 20% uplift on there. 
one, to protect myself, there's more risk at a bigger refurb of things going wrong, builders going wrong, not keeping to them costs. So you want to reward it more because it's more effort, but also you want more protection in it because there's more variabilities for it to go wrong. So stuff like this as well, I would get rid of these doors. So look at the doors. I would just leave that open plan. A bar like this again, smash this out, smash that out. Just make good of the walls. We've started stripping this one. The walls underneath, thankfully, are in good condition. But if you've got wallpaper on the wall, always factor in you need to plaster it. So put the cost in of plastering it, which is usually about three and a half grand at the moment. Put the cost in for that. And if you don't have to plaster it, just add a bonus. Doors, always look at the doors. Look how they close as well. Again, these little things will, are things that tenants will come back out for. These sorts of doors like this, if, this color is, is dated, but I would keep that and just paint it and just change the, just change the handles. And again, look at the lights. If you look at the lights and all the electrics, you just get an understanding. Electric stuff is usually under the stairs. So fuse board, what you can look at with these, look at that there, They're, they are old back boiler ones for your heating. There is a newer boiler in here, I've seen it, so that's just from the old one that's not been decommissioned. If you've got that in there only, then it's signs of a back boiler. They're either usually somewhere like this, or they can be on the chimney breast. But when you're looking at wiring, what you wanna look out for is, look, here you've got nice, thick, new gray wiring going in here. The wiring's on the plugs, the wiring itself might be okay because it's nice and thick. This is an old board, definitely need, need these changing, have to be the metal ones now, so 100% has to be changed. In most properties, you're going to factor in about £700 to, to £1,000 just changing the board and getting it up to new modern regs because there's some new regs that's come out. So every time I do a viewing, straight away I put down like £800 just for like uh, remedial work to get the to get it right. And if it's cheaper, then ultimately you've had a bonus. But in most cases at the moment, it's costing around £700 on average, even if it doesn't, doesn't need a rewire. Just Again, I would just get this cleared. I'd get this wooden Chinese style stuff cleared. I would take this lean to down. What you've always got to do is look at the end value and say to yourself, what is the cost of repairing this in comparison to the cost of keeping it? And what benefits would it have of keeping this? I believe there's no benefit in keeping that. The cost of taking that down and then covering that flooring. So you can get this plastic decking from Ikea. It's really cheap, but it's durable because it's plastic. And I'll just cover over the top of that and just make that just a little patio -y style area. I'm gonna come in as well and look around the back here to see is it anywhere. Like these places like this often cause damp. Like if this is blocked or like here's a typical example, if they've built this up too high and the drainage is not right, that can then what starts causing the damp pro problems inside. This has had, has had damp because look, they've drilled this and injected it. That don't work. Even this sort of stuff here, they put this on for damp things. This is something we need to get chipped off straight away because that will again hold in too much moisture and stop the property from breathing. With the damp, you want to use PIV systems, make sure the property can breathe correctly, not just going straight in with damp proof courses. I've done lots of damp proof courses over my years and there was, wasn't needed. The, the PIV systems are positive air flow systems that keep the property breathing. Just make sure, like if the kitchen's getting damp, you have your extractor above the cooker all the time, but put in another constant flow extractor fan in there. So it's constantly letting the kitchen breathe, but they're always the humidity stat ones in the bathrooms and sometimes in the kitchen if it, if it needs more airflow in the property. But again, when I'm coming and looking at these kitchens, I leave in, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave these ones, but I put a hob in and an oven and that's it. I don't put any white goods in mine. So for this particular one, What's the carcasses like? Do we upcycle this or do we change it? There's a lot of units here. So it's, it's a definite upcycle on this one. These are actually good units and these are a shabby sheet ones. So if you painted these and changed the handles, this would look really good. What we're gonna do in here though is take these units out of the wall. I would cover these, I'd put a splash back here, like a steel one or a glass one. And I would cover that with just cladding just to like modern it up. Again, there's a fridge in here. I would take all these units out and I would just put the oven back underneath there in an oven unit and I'd leave this space here for someone's fridge and whatnot and stuff like that. It's nice. Always think about a bigger cupboard in these for, for people's mops and stuff like that, but they've got the understairs cupboard as well. So that's what you've got to think when you design the kitchen, is there space for, the, for mops and ironing boards? So this one, for example, has got a dishwasher in now. That will come out and we'll get rid of that. So even if that worked, if that broke again, you have to replace goods like for like. So Whirlpool is not a cheap dishwasher. Uh, so you'd have to replace it with another Whirlpool one. But what we're gonna do with this, as I said, change the worktops, 
nice sink, like it'll be a cottage style one. We'll paint this a nice, like either green or, or midnight blue or gray with rose handles, rose sink. It just goes with the style of what this would be. Probably maybe put some chrome or, or rose gold uh, taps on there, same color as the sink. What I do is when I'm looking at upcycling, I might go slightly better spec on the worktop and some of the taps than I would if I'm changing the whole kitchen because I'm only upcycling. And the biggest impact is the kitchen. Definitely change this flooring. Just if anything looks dated, change it. You wanna get things modernized in, in these properties. So an upcycle this, you could change the doors. Kitchen this sort of size, to buy the kitchen for this is probably gonna be about 2.8, there's a lot of units in here. Maybe 2,800 pounds to buy these units. So then supply and fit, you're probably looking at about 1,000 pounds to, to fit it and take the old one out to so 1,500 pounds, depending on your labor cost. All my costs are based on around 200 pounds per day for trades. That's a reasonable cost. We use just bars on these if we have to. Often they can be might, they can be uh, mitre dim. So for me, the quality of the design is much more important than the quality of the finish. And what I mean by quality of finish, you don't want a shoddy finish where things are falling apart, but if there's a wider gap this end and a smaller gap at that end, things like that doesn't matter. It's just a design. Nobody comes in here looking for these things. Slow closers as well. Look, this kitchen must be 25 year old. It's still in good condition, no slow closers on them. Slow closers are nice, but they're just gonna cost you extra costs. In the drawers, the, the kitchen like providers, howdens or magnets gonna put the, the spaces for your knife and forks. They always put in two end panels around your cooker. You don't need all these little bits. All these bits, shaving them off, really, really shaves off massive amounts from, it all adds up, especially when you've only got like maybe 10, 15 grand uplifts in these. If you keep on adding these little 500 pound, 1,000 pound savings, it just pushes it more into your profit. You don't need the high-end lab labor costs, and you don't want the cheapest ones. You want them to be just above the cheapest ones, not the big offices who's got office staff and all overheads, because that's factored into the price. They're much more reliable, but if you put together your own program of works, so the idea is you go through these properties now, you put together a check sheet of what you want, then you put it onto a Gantt chart, which will be in the resources, and I'll do another video to accompany this, you put it in the Gantt chart and you put in the time scale. So then when these smaller builders look at that, they can quickly go, yeah, that is reasonable. You've put four days for a clear out. You've put three days for your re first fix rewire. So if you put as much information together for them as possible, it makes it easier. If somebody comes in and see a really nice looking kitchen and a nice looking bathroom, that's what they're looking at. Stairs, I will put carpets on. So again, as I'm walking up here, I'm looking wallpaper. As I said, you've always got to count for plastering underneath it. Ceilings, always look at your ceilings. This Artex ceiling, I would leave. Your description to what you say to the builder is really, really important. So if you say paint the woodwork, for me, I would say just clean this woodwork down and give it one coat just to tidy it up. So you just give them that instruction as opposed to doing their own interpretation, which some of them will sand it right back. They'll give it, they'll really get it done nice. And again, the level of the quality of the paint is one of the biggest ones. Handprints get on walls straight away. Just loads of things happen. So paint is not that important, the quality. I whitewash all of mine because it's no cutting in. So it's quicker. And you tell the, you tell the painter or the builder, look, we want it whitewashed, you don't have to cut in. So it's nice and quick. So yeah. Get it painted, but to say we just need one coat on there. You see how it goes. If you look at it afterwards and it's not looking great after one coat, then you get a second one on there. But that said, you've really got to direct them properly. So again, like if you go into this room, what we do with these with the flooring is grey carpets. But you've got to tell them what mill you want of the of the flooring. You want what underlay you want. Do you want the thicker one? Because you can come into a room like this and say to one builder, "Can you have white walls, grey carpets?" And what he'll do is he'll just paint the walls white over the top of the wallpaper. He'll put them white, grey, spin tile tile carpets tiles down, which are horrible with no underlay. And you've got what you've asked for. You'll say to another builder, "Can you put on?" white walls, gray carpets, and he'll put the really thickest gray carpet down with the thickest underlay with your feet sink into and you've got no socks on, but he'll strip the walls back, he'll plaster the walls, he'll sand back all the skirtings, uh, paint them really white, but you've got, the same, you've got the same result, but just two different interpretations from it. So you need to be super specific how you want these things done. So I said, even with the painting, you've got to say to them, look, just give it one coat of white just to freshen it up. If that's, if that's what it could do. But again, here I had wallpaper up, the walls looking good, these walls are in good condition. So again, if you just rub your hands over these walls, once they're stripped back, you'll tell. That is paintable, definitely paintable, but you do want to factor in either plastering it or backing lining it. Wall conditions is one of the massive ones. It does it look nice with freshly plastered wall, yes, but it never really has an impact on, on your price and your rentals. 
So again, you wanna look at your boiler systems. This is a new boiler system, so this is probably gonna be good. But you don't know for certain until you fire them up, but you can see it's got the, it's still got the sticker on there with the guarantee stuff and stuff like that, so it's fairly new. But look where they are, look where they're positioned. Stuff like this is usually hard, because like, what do you do with this? So, I'd probably take this out. It's gonna be hard, to, like just because of the material of this, it's gonna be hard to paint it, it's not gonna paint properly, it's gonna look odd, repainted. But again, this one here, where it's has in that in, probably gonna to wanna to leave some something there. But what I'd probably do with this is either look for new door, I'd probably look for new doors, either get a nice bit of ply sort of style wood that looks like it's more wooden looking, and just put a new doors, just get it cut out and put new doors on there and have them painted to make it look better. But this actual stuff they've built this with is not really paintable, it'd look really, really cheap. So, or another little tip is go to Ikea, bargain corner, they've got loads of doors in there all the time, like big doors. You probably will find something that you can make good and fit, fit with that. Similar again with the ceiling, personally, it's not ideal having paper on there. But again, if the wall's nice and white, it's got a nice new carpet, that's what they're gonna look at. We're looking this in the bathroom, make sure we always got an extractor fan in. Good news, we've got this extractor fan here. So we'll just update that to one that runs constant flow. This has got a shower in there, three bedroom houses, people want baths. So we'd reconfigure this, it's quite a small bathroom. But we'd get a bath along here, so it means moving the toilet around to that side and a sink around to there. Just so reconfiguration of this, but getting the bath in there. We'll go over the top of this with cladding, just over the top of the whole of this, these tiles, so you don't have to rip them out. The time it takes is just so much quicker to go over top of them cladding. Bathroom unit in there, the ones we use probably about 600 pounds. So yeah, they're not overly expensive. The reconfiguration might be a bit. But again, coming to the bedrooms, I'd look at this, again, this here. This looks a bit dated, this, but that said, I think the cost of replacing that is just too much money, so that would stay for me in these ones. But this, this bedroom is ready to pretty much move in. There's nothing really that you're doing. There is a crack here. That crack doesn't concern me, though. Uh, it's, I don't think it's any movement or any things like that with it. But again, when you've got these bay windows, it's what you want to look for. Look for signs of like damp along these here. Again, look just for anywhere there's penetration damp. Upstairs, if it's damp, it's definitely condensation or penetration. Penetration is usually coming from the gutter in or these, these, these bay windows are notorious for letting in bits of damp as well. But just look around the room, look at the sockets, see how many sockets there are. Again, sockets on the skirting boards. It's a hard one, this, because the wiring from the, where it comes from the fuse board looks like modern wire. But all the sockets on the skirting board, which is not a modern regs, it has to be high up. The reason why, if you plug a plug in, it bends a lead underneath it. And if it bends a lead, it can compromise a lead from, from breaking and yeah, then it can cause fires. So things like this as well, in these sort of rooms, uh, I'd be tempted to leave this, because it's kind of like a, it is, it is a bed. You've got a mattress there, but I'll probably just rip all that out. Uh, definitely take all the shelving off, just rip this out, rip this out as well. But again, check all your windows, see how they open. Uh, the chipboard on that ceiling, again, it's gonna be really hard to get it off. Probably would leave that as long as we got the walls looking smooth and the carpets in there nice and grey. Probably would leave that again, but just make a judgment on it. If you've got it in the budget and it still leaves you enough margin in there, nobody looks at ceilings to go, that makes me the house worth more money. If you've got a really nice looking bathroom in there, a really nice looking kitchen in there, that are the things that people are going to rent it. But also, a little tip is get your phone out, just go on houses nearby and see what the competition looks like around. Very rarely have they got modern stuff in there, even though they're finishing the paint job, looks better spec of paint job, they very rarely got these bits in there. But just to summarise, go through the property, logical order, uh, check off all these things on the checklist that you've got with this, always judge in your head, what is the cost of the uplift I'm going to get from this, and what's the returns, and how much does it eat into my margin. So here we go, this is what it looks like finished. We ended up painting the kitchen doors. There's a few things done slightly different. Matt is my partner, he's the front head of this. So if you wanna work with us on projects like this, cause we source properties like this, we manage properties like this, all in around Teesside and the Northeast, put in the comments the word, or should I say the letters BE for Brooklyn's Estate. If you put the letters in BE, if you're interested in working with us, we'll tell you how we can source properties like this one for you. We rented it for 775 in the end, so the numbers still stack really, really well on these style properties it is area pacific where they do still stack if you want to understand hmo's work really well in the area so watch this video here because we do a refurbishment of a hmo and go through the same sort of stats and if you're still here make sure you smash that subscribe button and remember if you don't evolve your ideas you never live on your own terms so evolve your ideas live on your own terms and have an amazing day